you can get Grand Champ in Rocket League with zero mechanics. Changed my mind. Last week, I dropped a Twitter post that was a little bit controversial. We got mixed reviews claiming you can get Grand Champ without mechanics. Some people agreed, a lot of people disagreed, and almost everyone wanted to know what I meant by that. So today, I'm gonna walk you through step-by-step -step on how to get Grand Champ with roughly zero mechanics. First, I'll cover the five mechanics you actually need to get Grand Champ. So yeah, when I say zero mechanics, what I really mean is zero flashy mechanics. But more on that later. Second, I'll go over the three strategies you need to use to rank up if you only have those five mechanics. So whether you're plat, diamond, or champ two, I guarantee you're gonna walk away from this video knowing something about how to rank up that you didn't realize before. Oh, and if you're new here, you might be wondering why, why is this guy claiming you can get GC with zero mechanics? Well, reason is because I run Rocket League's number one coaching program where we literally specialize in helping plat through champ ranked players get grand champ or even SSL in less than six weeks. So if that sounds like you, we actually just reopened enrollment and I'm searching for five more intermediate ranked players before the end of this week that wanna grab that GC or SSL title. DM me on Discord with the keyword hold and I'll make sure to hold a spot for you and we can talk details about coaching. Otherwise, enjoy the video. Okay, to kick it off, let's talk about the first five mechanics you actually need to get Grand Champ. Yeah, truth is, you can't get GC with absolutely no mechanics. You have to be able to do something with the controller, but it's probably much less than you think. So, in no particular order, number five, and this is the only mechanic that will happen in the air, it's fast aerials. Believe it or not, most situations, and just for clarity, I'm going to be mainly talking about 2v2 in this video, but this stuff still applies to 3v3 and even 1v1, if that's your thing. But the only real place you'll need to use fast aerials is near your net. I'm going to show you how to score without basically ever aerialing in your games. But the reason I say you need to know fast aerials and you need to know how to do them the correct way, a lot of people do these wrong, is because if the ball is near your net, you have to be able to contest in certain situations. Most of the strategies I'm gonna teach you are gonna revolve around the ground, but fast aerials are one of those things where if you're just slower than everybody in your lobby, it's gonna be really, really hard to rank up. Now, the good news is fast aerials are super easy to learn and I even have a two minute tutorial on how to do them. So if you haven't checked it out, I'll link it on screen. But fast aerials, that's the first mechanic you need to have down properly. Number four, recoveries. When most people think recoveries, I think they think like wave dashes and half flips. And those are very important parts of recoveries. But the two parts of recoveries that I think are even more important than wave dashing and half flips is power slide and air roll. I think wave dashes and half flips are the easy recoveries. Those are the things where you kind of just learn the muscle memory. And once you got it once, you kind of got it down. Power slide and air roll on the other hand, are the things that will really make or break your recoveries. I'm specifically thinking when you get bumped, when you fall off the wall, when you're awkward in the corner, it has to be instinct for you to grab onto power slide and make sure you air roll properly to always land on your four wheels. So you can absolutely just go into free play and practice the basics. I still do think wave dashes are important. I still do think half flips are important, but if you want to train air roll and power slide, I highly recommend you check out Hornet's Nest by DMC. It's this workshop map that honestly, a lot of people don't know about. And it's probably the best way to train air roll and power slide when it comes to recoveries. Basically, the map is just like a gauntlet where you spawn in this cage and you have to dodge obstacles, but it gets to the point where it's so fast that you're going to have to really get comfortable with air roll and power slide, both facing forward and facing backwards, which is really what's going to become super useful when we talk about some of these strategies later on. So number four, recoveries, get those down. Third mechanic, dribbling or bounce dribbling. So many people get really good at carries and flicks. But when I'm talking about dribbling, I think what's more important to get Grand Champ is bounce dribbling. Now, bounce dribbling is just one of those things that people overlook because it looks simple, but it's actually so hard to defend. If you've ever watched like a Flakes video, this is how he's scoring 90% of his goals. And I want to show you how to use this against players later. But dribbling and bounce dribbling, you have to get down the basics. 
To train this, the number one drill I recommend is something called the hot potato. I've shown this off in other cases, but basically what this drill is, you should go into free play, roll the ball towards you using the D-pad shortcut, and practice chipping the ball up around the field, getting that timing down, so that way you never kill the ball. This is going to improve your first touches, as well as your power slide control, which is going to translate massively to your bounce dribbling. Once you have this down, you'll be a constant threat with the ball, because at any point, you can change both the height and the direction left and right. Practice just a couple minutes of this, and I promise you're going to see massive results. That's number three. Number two, shooting plus air roll shots. This is one of those things where I can't necessarily give that much like training advice, but what I will say is you need to be good at shooting. Shooting is just one of those things where it's going to take time to get better, right? It's just like air roll in the sense that you got to get reps in. It's not like a half flip or a wave dash where it's just going to click overnight. That being said, I've never met a player that doesn't need to work on shooting. Shooting is just something that you can always improve on especially at the lower ranks because the truth is if you can't score opens you're not you're not going to rank up as you get higher and higher ranked you also want to learn how to use air roll to air roll one way and shoot the other which i do have tutorials on as well but the key here guys is honestly just reps you can go into training packs. You can go into free play. You can even do aim training by Coco. It's a workshop map. I know I like that one. I know a lot of other people appreciate it as well, but shooting is just something you have to get better over time. A little bit of effort will go a long way. You don't need to be perfect at this, but you got to be able to hit the ball hard at the very least, even if it's not perfectly accurate. So that's mechanic number two. And then finally, a lot of people don't consider this a mechanic, but I think it's actually so important. Shadow defense and more so backwards saves. Now, the reason this is such an important mechanic, I'm going to call it, is because how crucial it is to the strategy that I'm gonna teach you. The fastest way I think to get Grand Champ in Rocket League is not actually by playing constant aggro, constant out speed, and just dominating on offense. Instead, it's by letting greedy lower rank players overcommit on your side, and then using these basic mechanics to save the ball consistently and score breakaways. I'm gonna get more into this later, but to practice shadow defense and backward saves, you can use the D-pad shortcut. I think I go over this in my training tutorial. This one's really, really good. You just go into free play and shoot the ball at you practice tons of backward saves or training packs work equally well but once again you just got to build those bridges in your head to understand where your car is facing and which way you need to turn because this is a super super important part of ranking up and if you can just get good defense you will be leagues ahead of everybody else at your rank so the final mechanic i think you need in your kit backward saves practice those and now we can get into the three strategies Okay, I know that was kind of rapid fire. That was a lot of mechanics, but I promise it's all about to come together with the three strategies you need to use to get Grand Champ. One last warning, before I show you the strategies, I want to emphasize how important understanding the mechanics are for this. The truth is, no strategy or tip works in isolation. Like, at the end of the day, if you don't have the mechanics to execute, you can have the perfect idea in mind, you could still mess up. And so what I absolutely don't want you to do after watching these, these strategies is to go into your games, try the strategy out once or twice, mess it up mechanically, and then come back and say, Luke, these strategies suck. They don't work. No, I promise I've coached over a thousand people at this point. In the current meta, for as long as I can see, these strategies are the way you should play. Don't get discouraged. There will be a little bit of a learning curve, but I promise if you stick with these things, they will help. I just had to say that. I want to get that out of the way. Strategy number one, dribbling on an angle. Here's the thing, and let's say you're playing 2v2. I'm just gonna use 2v2 as examples for all this. If you don't have mechanics, how are you gonna score when you get the ball and there are two people back? Well, what a lot of people do is they just go for carries, they go for flicks, and they do all these things that only beat one defender. So what ends up happening is we get all these situations where, you know, we get the ball, we flick over one defender, then the guy behind them scoops it up, gets a one-on-one -on -one against our teammate, and then our teammate gets scored on. A lot of people in these situations think it's the teammate's fault, it's not, it's your fault for flicking the ball away and leaving your teammate in the 1v1. So instead, we're gonna dribble on an angle. What we're gonna do is we're gonna hit the ball slightly across the field when we get it. What this does is it opens up your field of view and allows you to see a challenger coming. Then, when they get close, instead of going for a flick, instead of going for some crazy outplay, all we're gonna do 
is wrap around the ball and do a power slide cut. Now, I know this sounds stupid. How, how could this work against the players at my rank? I literally do this against pros. If you go watch my 30 days of pros video, you'll see me do this against Arsenal. So it works against the best players in the world. And the key to doing this is having good power slide control and making that good first touch on an angle. What this allows you to do is one, potentially beat the defender. In that case, things are great because you now beat one defender and the beat didn't commit you. So you're ready to play against the second. Here, you can go for a flick. You can try to finish. You can do a bump play, whatever you want to do. Then you can try to score it. However, even if it doesn't work, the reason dribbling on an angle is so good is because at any point you can just default to a low 50 or low challenge and then turn right back around and get behind your teammate. That's why dribbling on an angle is so good. There's a ton of potential upside, but you don't commit very much at the same time. And this is what allows you to have that really high impact and sort of win either way. So that's dribbling on an angle. Strategy number two, cornering. Now this kind of goes hand in hand with dribbling on an angle, but what is cornering? Well, I noticed when a lot of people play 2v2 and let's say they give up the ball, they go for that shot, right? They go for the dribbling on an angle. It doesn't work out. Opponent gets the ball. Now you're shadowing back towards your side of the field. What a lot of people will do is they'll try to cut off the opponent, try to challenge at midfield, go for a 50-50, try to make a little bit of a risky turn and, and dunk the opponent. When a lot of times there's no real threat happening at the midfield. Instead, learn how to take the ball back to your corner and reset the play. Now, the reason this is so good is because a lot of low rank players don't know what to do other than chase you when you take control of the ball. So if the opponent tosses the ball into your corner, let's say, instead of stopping, instead of trying to turn it up the field, simply let the ball roll back to your corner, guard your corner boost, make sure you pick up corner boost, and then try to turn the ball back up the field or take a 50-50 in your corner. The reason this is so good is because your corner is actually the safest place to take a 50-50. A lot of people get this wrong, and this is why a lot of people can't get grand champ because they're constantly just trying to push the ball towards the opponent's side of the field. But the truth is, if you think about the field like a heat map, the safest part of the field to take a 50-50 is your corner because the whole rest of the field is open behind your opponent. And if you can just get it by them, you can very likely turn a breakaway into a goal. But you would be incredibly surprised by how many people will just monkey and challenge you in your corner, overcommit, leaving you and their poor teammate now in a 1v1 where you can break away and potentially score. This is one of the most important things you can get good at. It may be difficult at first, but just believe me on this. When you can take 50-50s in advantageous positions, that's how you beat players with mechanics that are even better than you. Finally, to wrap it up, strategy number three is something I'm dubbing power plays. Now that you know how to dribble on an angle and corner instead of trying to cut off the ball, you should should be putting yourself in a lot of situations where you get 2v1s. What I mean by power plays is pushing specifically when you have an advantage. Think a 2v1 in twos. What a lot of people will do is they'll just go for solo plays in any situation. When they get the ball, they're always going for an air dribble. They're always going up the wall. They're always just trying to do it all themselves. Whereas what a power play is, is it's playing safe when there are two defenders back and playing super aggro when one over commits and now your team has a manpower advantage. This might sound like all up in the air. So let me give you an example. Let's say you just cornered, right? You just put the ball in your corner and the guy on the opposing team pushes up and challenges you. If you get a beat on this guy in your corner, like even just a 50-50, he goes flying into your corner. And now you have a 2v1 with the opponent as the last man back. The solo play move would be to try to take the ball up the wall, start a really fancy dribble, go for some insane flick. Whereas the power play move would just be to rush the ball up the field and try to force a 50, force the ball forward and create a goal that way. So basically, whenever you get a 2v1 situation, play super aggro, force 50-50s, control the ball up the field, go for demos, play super aggressive. Then when you don't have that manpower advantage, let's say it's just a 2v2, instead of committing very hard, now you're gonna play super passive. The idea with the power play is instead of trying to necessarily score, all we're trying to do is create a 2v1 situation. Once that 2v1 situation happens, then we go super aggro, and that's how you beat players. Even when you don't have good mechanics, you're just taking winning bets. So bottom line, focus less on trying to outplay one defender and more on trying to create 2v1 situations, and I guarantee you're gonna start racking up way more goals just automatically in your games. Okay, so to recap, five mechanics you need to get Grand Champ 
without mechanics. Fast aerials, recoveries, dribbling, more specifically bounce dribbles, shooting, and then shadow defense slash backward saves. If you have these mechanics, you're gonna be able to use the three strategies we talked about way more effectively. Three strategies dribbling on an angle, cornering, and power plays. All of these strategies are alternative ways to play than just ball chasing and challenging everything. When you use these strategies, you'll start to notice how ball chasey people probably are at your ranks. And if you use these properly, you'll be able to bait them in, capitalize on their mistakes, and beat them without even really having to outplay them that hard. Now, to implement this stuff in your game, it's gonna take some time and there will probably be failures. If you want more examples of how to do this stuff specifically, I highly recommend checking out Flakes, Road to SSL, specifically his 2v2 series with no mechanics, or check out twitch.tv slash spookluke. That's me <laughs> because I'm actually at GC1 right now. And whenever I'm grinding up the ranks, I commentate exactly what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. So if you're having trouble, I've heard from a lot of players, it's been very helpful to kind of just hear me commentate through what I'm doing in game. Whew. That was a massive video. Hopefully that was helpful. If you want more from me and you want to see this stuff before it goes live on YouTube, catch me on the gram. It's at SpookLukeGram. Go hit me up with a follow there. And otherwise, I'm going to uh, go get some water because I'm actually sweating from recording the script. As always, thanks so much for watching, guys. And I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.